East Coast, and good morning if you're on the West Coast. Thanks for joining us for today's Bloomerang Customer Webinar. My name is Stephen Shattuck, and I'm the VP of Marketing here at Bloomerang, and I'll be moderating today's discussion. And today I'm joined by my colleague, Cody Lawson. He's the Conversion Project Manager over here at Bloomerang. Hey there, Cody. How are you today? Good. Is it morning or afternoon where you are? I can't remember. Uh, we just hit afternoon. Okay, good. So we're all in the afternoon. Great. Well, thanks for being here. Thanks for taking a, a half hour to uh, show us some, some cool things in Bloomerang today. Sure. So what's going to happen today is uh, Cody is going to run through a little bit of a, a presentation on acknowledgments. He's got some really cool uh, tips and tricks to share with you, uh, some best practices, and he's going to show us some things uh, uh, real life and the actual Bloomerang software as well. And after he's done with his presentation, we're going to jump right into a, an interactive Q&A session as we always do. So if you hear something during the presentation that maybe you'd like uh, explained a little bit further or maybe repeated, uh, please don't hesitate to use that little chat box right there on your screen. Uh, I'll see those questions and comments and so will Cody. And we'll try to answer just as many as possible before about the uh, 1.30 uh, p.m. Eastern hour. We'll try to keep this to 30 minutes. Uh, just as best we can. And as always, I'll be sending out Cody's slides and a full recording of this presentation. It's actually recording as we speak. So if you need to bounce early or maybe if there's something you wanted to review a little bit later, uh, look for an email from me a little later this afternoon that will have both of those uh, pieces of content in there for you. So I'm not going to waste any more time. I'm going to hand it off to Cody. He's going to get things started for us. So Cody, take it away. Great. Thanks a lot, Stephen, and thank you everyone for uh, showing up for my first customer webinar today. Um, despite what Stephen says, I'm going to say, uh, since this is my first webinar, please limit your questions to something very softball-like, for example, <laughs> how to log into Bloomerang. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, for my presentation, like Stephen said, I'm going to be talking about acknowledgments. Um, acknowledgments is a very large topic, and so we could extend this uh, far beyond the half an hour that we're trying to keep this under. Uh, for that reason, um, I'm going to try to limit it to these three categories. Um, the importance of acknowledgments, where I'll cover some of the basics of acknowledgments, best practices. Um, then I'll talk about how acknowledgments are handled in Bloomerang. And then for my third step, I'm going to uh, jump into Bloomerang and show you a walkthrough example acknowledgement letter and kind of explore some of the features within Bloomerang uh, and how it works. So let's jump right into the importance of acknowledgments. Uh, well, you know, we're Bloomerang, so this is sort of the first thing that's on our mind, which is there are retention benefits for um, providing uh, thank you notes and providing uh, effective acknowledgments. You know, Jay Love is our CEO, and he's uh, referred to thank you notes and acknowledgments as the springboard of building donor retention. And uh, when Stephen uh, provides you with these slides, uh, there should be links available uh, to some of our blog posts that, that talk about these, these points in a little bit more detail. Um, also, you know, Dr. Adrian Sargent, he is our resident scientist when it comes to studying donor retention, and he has conducted a number of studies that show that, uh, you know, the, the acknowledgments are a significant factor in retaining donors. So when you think about it, whether it's, you know, the first interaction that you've ever had with a donor or the first interaction you've had with that donor since uh, he or she made that donation, the acknowledgement itself kind of serves like uh, a checkpoint, if you will, uh, in your relationship with that donor. So, you know, a checkpoint is kind of like a border between the end of the transaction that the donor made with you and that next interaction, that next engagement activity, that next transaction that you are seeking uh, out from that donor. So it's an important step and it's an important milestone in your relationship. Secondly, I mean, your donor deserves to be acknowledged for what he or she provides to your organization. Um, you know, a gift, whether it's large or small, it's, it makes a positive impact for your organization. And 
that donor deserves to know that. The donor also wants to know what that difference is. You know, if, your gift, if the gift truly makes a difference, if it was deeply appreciated, then let that donor know that their money is somehow unique because it was used for this specific purpose. Um, donors today like to have that specificity. They like to know that their donation went to providing a vaccination for puppies or, you know, it provided uh, food for children uh, and can keep a child fed for the next three weeks or something along those lines. Also, you know, you value the individual just beyond the money he or she donates and the acknowledgement letter serves that purpose. So you're creating a relationship of mutual engagement and interaction with the donor and the acknowledgement is part of that. This isn't a situation where you're holding up a sign and a cup saying, please drop some money in to yep and then drive away. You know, even if your organization is, uh, if its purpose is to provide support for people who hold up signs and a cups, your, your relationship with a donor can't thrive in that way. You want to get to know your donors because those are the people with whom you repeatedly spend time. You don't want the only interactions that you have to be when that donor drives up, drops money in your cup, drives away, and then the next time you speak with that, that donor is when they drive up again. So as far as um, I've, I've picked three uh, with a little bonus fourth on the next screen. The first is, you know, use emotion. Giving is an emotional process. It's not cold, purely logical. So when you thank a donor, when you provide that acknowledgement, return that emotion. You're happy that you were thought of, your organization was thought of, and that the person gave his or her time, money, you know, support in some way to you, and you want to show that emotional return. Because at the end of the day, the end goal for the donor isn't that the money was recognized, it's what you do with that money. So give the donor what he or she wants in that acknowledgement. Tell the donor what you did at donation. And then at the end of the day, nothing beats a handwritten note, especially today when you might have hundreds of emails coming in. No matter how much emotion you put behind an email, it doesn't have the same effect on someone from a human connection standpoint as a handwritten note, you know, pen to paper, mailed through the Postal Service. It, it, it can't be faked in the same way that you could with a, a template email or something along those lines. So if you have a really special donation, then, or if you simply can have the time to do so, providing a handwritten note is very impactful and makes a huge impression on a donor from a retention standpoint. Um, I originally had in, input a, uh, a YouTube video from Dr. Adrian Sargent uh, I decided to take out the video. You can still find it if you go to our YouTube website. It's a uh, one-minute anecdote that he was talking about. I decided to take it out because I want to sound smart during my presentation, and nobody sounds smart when he's put up against a person with a British accent, I found. So um, the, the anecdote basically went that today's, you know, retention or uh, today's nonprofit world, the acknowledgements are very formulaic. Dear John, thank you so much for your generous gift. And he likened that formula to back when you would get socks as a gift from Auntie Ethel. And your mother would make you write a thank you note, Dear Auntie Ethel, thank you for the nice socks. I even tried to put in a little British accent there. And that sort of thank you note, it doesn't seem to have much emotion or much thought behind it. So an effective acknowledgement says, we were excited that we received this, this money from you, this, you know, this time from you, and here, here we're going to show you why we're excited about it. Here's what we're doing with that donation. Here's why it's important to us. So now we'll jump into acknowledgements in Bloomerang, kind of talking about the, the the basics of how acknowledgements are set up. There are two parts to acknowledgements in Bloomerang. 
The first is the letter or the email sections where you can actually create that thank you. The second is the interaction that you create that's tied to the constituent and the transaction. So I'll go through each one of those briefly. Um, you know, a, a basic acknowledgement setup, and the one that I'm going to use when I do our walkthrough, includes uh, four templates. You'll have two for new donors, and you'll have two for repeat donors. Um, the new donor, and, and each of those would have um, a template based on whether that new donor made a donation above your average, whatever that may be, or the new donor made a donation below your average. Same thing with repeat donors. You would have a slightly different template. Uh, you would re uh, acknowledge that gift slightly differently if it's a repeat donor that provides an above average donation or a repeat donor that provides a below average donation. As far as interaction basics go, um, the acknowledgement interaction is automatically created when you generate the letter or send the email if you are using the, uh, the letter email section in Bloomerang. And it will, it will add those to the donations and the constituent records that are um, provided in the filters that you create. And I'll go through those filters uh, in, in our walkthrough in just a moment. If you are um, acknowledging a donation in a special or unique way that's sort of outside of Bloomerang, if you are providing that handwritten note, if you are going in person to thank uh, a, a major donor, if you're making a phone call, then you will need to manually create that interaction and you do so from the actual donation on the um, constituents timeline. So now I'm going to uh, jump over to the Bloomerang uh, database that I have set up and kind of walk through uh, a, an acknowledgement letter. Okay, so um, here's your typical Bloomerang database. This is my personal one that I've set up. Um, for purposes of simplicity, I'm just going to go to the letter section. The email section is set up fairly similarly, so um, the, the steps are basically the same. Uh, you can see that I've got my four uh, template acknowledgments uh, that I mentioned earlier. I'll quickly walk through the steps to create a new letter in case you want to do that. You would obviously click on acknowledgement. You'd type in the name. You'd choose acknowledgement as the purpose. And then you decide whether you want to create one letter per transaction, one letter per constituent, or one letter per household. Uh, then finally, you select the style, uh, the design, and that's all you need to do to create a letter. I'm going to jump into the first time donors that have donated greater than $100 in a single donation. This is the uh, letter editor. You can see that there are three tabs. We've got design, filter, and details. You will customize and add in the um, Bloomerang fields. The filter section is where you identify the, uh, the donations. You filter by the constituents or the amounts or the dates, and you identify the transactions that are going to be included in that letter. And then the details section is like that step in creating the letter where you have the name, the purpose, and you can then switch back and forth between uh, one letter per transaction per constituent or household. Go back to the design tab. You can also see that we've got um, the ability to download a preview page. Um, there's also the page settings where you can set uh, the paper size or the margins. 
And then this third button over here is the Ahern Audit. And when you click on that, it provides two uh, important uh, little tools for you to use, which is, if it'll jump in there for me. That's interesting. Okay, so I guess it's not, uh, it's not clicking through for some reason uh, right now. When you click on that, you will be given uh, two uh, pieces of information. The first is the U versus I test. An acknowledgement letter that's effective shouldn't be bragging about your organization. The acknowledgement is intended to be for the donor. And so for that reason, the studies have shown that you want to use about twice as many, at least twice as many words as I words, as you know, I words being your organization. So you want to talk up the, the donor himself, herself, and not your organization as much. The second um, piece of information that you'll get with the Ahern audit is the Flesh Kincaid reading level. The ideal range for the reading level should be between the sixth and eighth grade reading level. Um, while you can't see it, it, sh it would show that in my case, it's at a, it, this letter would be at a fifth grade reading level. So the idea would be, I might want to smart it up a little bit and kind of hit that range. Um, jumping back over here into the design uh, details, I did want to show you these two buttons. Um, the first is the insert bloomerang field. You can see these, each of these gray boxes is the bloomerang field and it will populate based on that amount for the transaction based on the filter, the formal name, you know, constituent uh, value, date, etc. And this other one is the insert bloomerang table. And I'll show you an example of that in the other letter that I did. So let's jump into the filter so that you can see how I created a first time donor uh, filter. It's greater than $100. This is not the only way that you have to make the filters. This is a very simplistic one. Um, and your organization, you may want to be more um, specific in the way that you set up your filters, but in order to get uh, first time donors greater than $100 in giving, I created a date filter that includes the last seven days. And then I added also that the amount of the donation is at least $100. That will bring in all the donations over $100, regardless of whether that constituent has previously donated. So in order to make sure that I only have first time donors, I include the giving history filter, which can be found right here. And since that filter is based on the constituent, I chose the date range being on or before 12, 10, 2013. So in other words, this is going to filter out any constituents who had transactions prior to this week. And that will allow me first time donors. If I then click on generate, you'll see that it takes me to a preview page. Well, well, let me uh, let me jump back in. Hold up, bear with me one second. So if I then generate that letter, it will take me to the preview page. I can see that I have two letters that are going to be generated and that there are two transactions. I get a design preview. You can click on this tab to see which transactions are going to be involved uh, in those letters. In this case, I've got um, a pledge that was made in the past seven days of $120 and then a new donor org uh, that provided $1,000. If this looks correct, then you can click on run. You'll be presented with two options. I highly recommend using this test option simply because it will provide you with five actual example letters. 
while not um, producing all of the letters that you may be generating. It also won't add those interactions. So it's really a good way to see how your letters will turn out. Um, I'm going to do the test in the other letters so that you can see how um, the different filter works and so that I can show you the um, Bloomerang data table. So with this one, um, the first time donors less than $100, you can see that the difference in the filter is I keep that constituent uh, filter where I exclude any constituent who has a donation prior to 1210, but then I change, I only need to change the amount so that the amount is at most $100. Um, if I then go into the generate, And preview it, you'll see that now I have, I've got two letters, and but there are four transactions. The reason being Johnny New Donor made three transactions within the past week, and Jane Starts Donating has made one. That's why there are only going to be two letters. I set it up so that there will be one letter per constituent. I'm going to go ahead and run that. up, you will see the um, Johnny New Donor here. This is what the transaction table will look like if you add one of those in. I think that for our purposes, um, we're getting close to being done. I did want to quickly show you how um, the interaction will then uh, populate into your uh, constituents timeline. So I'll jump into one of those very quickly. You can see here were the three donations that the new donor made. You can see the interaction, uh, the acknowledgement that was created is there. If I go into one of those donations, you'll also see that the acknowledged field is now switched to yes, and you can then click through to that acknowledgement uh, letter that's been created, and it will show you the donations that were included on that acknowledgement transaction. The last thing I'll show you before um, I switch it back over to Stephen to field some of the questions is we recently uh, released a new feature that allows you to delete the, um, the mailing that you created. So if you go through the process and you think everything's right, you run it, then you realize there's a problem, you can now reset the acknowledgement field to no on those transactions and delete that mailing. So you can, you can basically undo what you did um, if necessary. So if I go ahead and click on that, uh, you'll see that it, once it processes, if I go back into uh, Johnny's timeline, you'll see the interaction is gone. And if I go to one of the donations where the interaction would have been made, you'll see that it's turned back to no and that no acknowledgement interaction is created. So with that, um, I'll switch it back over to um, Stephen and I'll field some of your questions. Yeah, great, Cody. That was awesome. Thanks a lot for uh, sharing those uh, bits of knowledge. And for those of you, if you don't have those four sort of core letter templates set up, do do that today because it's just it's a nice thing to have to be able to send to each of those four groups of donors rather than just sending you know, the same letter template to everyone. Um, and in case you missed that, I did send over a blog post that kind of explains that there in the chat room. So Cody, we've got a couple of questions here. Our, our friend David has a couple of questions about the letters uh, specifically, he was wondering when the letters are generated, uh, are they saved in a Word or a PDF format? or do they stay in Bloomerang? So what happens there uh, when a letter is actually generated? When the letter is generated, uh, it will create a PDF uh, um, that you can download. Um, the letter will be saved in, in Bloomerang. I can actually, since I still got the, the screen shared with you, I can show you what it looks like once, yeah, let's see that. Um, once we walk through and fully generate the letter.
So when I click to finally run the, uh, the letter, it will ask me to download. Um, I can save the file. Uh, it will create the, each one. And then once I go back to the letter home page, you'll see that that uh, mailing was posted here. And you can see that there are two letters. I can re-download the letter, the, the letters that were generated later, or I now have that delete option as well to undo uh, the mailing if I realize that there's something that needs to be changed. Mm -hmm. You yeah, can that also... Was actually, um, that was actually David's next question is once it's generated, can he go back and edit that letter? You, you could go back to the template and in this case, you could go back to the template and change the way the template is, is done, but you can't go into a letter that you've downloaded and yeah. edit it. Right. right. So it would just make a new PDF and you could just overwrite it or, or discard that first one. Correct. Cool. So if you, go into the, if you go into the timeline for one of the donations that you acknowledge, um, Oh, I guess uh, I guess technically I was doing the uh, a different one, but um, you can also get to that letter through the donation on the uh, the donor's timeline as well. If you need to get to that specific letter, and I guess that's kind of a real case study for that delete interaction because if you went back and edited the letter, then you could remove that from the timeline. Exactly. Yeah, that's a nice feature. And if, if you missed that, we released that uh, early this week, and there's a nice blog post about it uh, on our blog that you can kind of get the details from. So check that out for sure. Um, so Cody, the $100 amount that you used in your uh, example, so that's, yes. that's the average gift amount. Um, David was wondering uh, where that number comes from. Does Bloomerang automatically tell you that, or do you have to kind of set up a filter to get that, that amount for your organization? Well, um, I used $100 just as an example. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that you can do um, is if you, want to, um, if you want to set up your filters on your letters slightly differently, um, where you always send out uh, the letter at the end of the week, you can use the dashboard which provides you with um, your average donations for the week, the month, or the year. Now, um, the one thing that I'll, I'll clarify and say, when it, when it says donations this year, it means the calendar year. When it says right. this month, it means the calendar month. So it would be December 1st through today are how those are being calculated. If you say this week, it will only be you know, from the beginning of this week until today. Um, mm -hmm. But if you want to set up your filters uh, slightly differently where you um, send out a donation for the week, then you can use these as, as guideposts for what your average donation has been. Yeah, it um, tells you right there, right on those panes. Mm -hmm. That's kind of nice. That's really nice. So that $100. So that's one way that you can do it. That $100 example here wasn't too far off. It looks like the average for that month was maybe 137 I guess I would probably use the year, huh? Because that gives like kind of the full picture. Right. It does yeah. give you a, a little bit larger example and you know my my database is, is skewed because mm -hmm. depending on what I'm doing I'm adding in you know huge donations and small donations so um, you you would hopefully see um, over the course of a year your average going uh, or I guess over the course of a year your average donation would be a little bit lower hopefully than your monthly donations because you would be continuing to add more donors and improve your retention rates and improve your right. Uh, overall averages, but um, that's that's a good way to get a quick um, option for an average is to use the the dashboard home uh, area. Yeah, that's nice. So, David, look at your dashboard and uh, and uh, try to extrapolate your average gift there. That's a pretty nice way to do it. Well, it's about 1:30. Why don't we uh, do one more question? Uh, looks like there's one more question from Joe, and I, I we just want to be respectful of everyone's time since we're already approaching 30 minutes. Um, so, Cody, you mentioned handwritten notes and, and, and written notes and things like that. And Joe was wondering uh, if we suggest sending a thank you note that's entirely handwritten or maybe a word processed letter um, that can actually be used for their tax deductible contribution. You know, wh what would you suggest people actually do? Should they send maybe both 
you know, send a letter that you kind of used in Boomerang and then maybe a handwritten note on top of it, or maybe include a handwritten note on the actual processed letter. You know, what do you think folks should do there? Well, um, I think that uh, you know, it, it all depends. I, it depends on the donation itself. Um, mm -hmm. But if you're if you're processing acknowledgement letters on a, a, a regular basis, if you are quickly creating a, a number of acknowledgement letters, and for example, you get a major gift from uh, a donor that you would want to send a handwritten note to, you may still want to create the acknowledgement letter in Bloomerang to um, to to create that acknowledgement, and then. You might simply, when you print that out, you might throw uh, a quick note on there saying, you know, this is, you know, this is just for, you know, your records. I will be reaching out to you directly via, you know, phone call. I'm going to come into your office and thank you personally. Uh, you know, I'll send you a handwritten note. Um, you can do both. I think that you, you should just use your best judgment. Obviously, if it's a major donor, you want to make it as personal as possible. Uh, I don't think that sending uh, a uh, a typed out one and then following it up with a handwritten note is is a is a bad idea at all, especially when it yeah. comes to maintaining those records. I agree. I've gotten those before. I've gotten that kind of standard thank you letter that I put in my tax folder and then maybe a week later or a couple days later I get a nice, you know, handwritten note from maybe the executive director. And that usually ends up on my, you know, mantle or, or entryway table for a little while. So that's kind of a nice way to do it. Well, mm -hmm. Cody, that was great. That was some really awesome information. Hopefully, uh, everyone listening enjoyed it uh, and is, was able to get something out of it. Um, we are going to do these uh, little half-hour educational uh, customer webinars about once a month. We're going we're gonna to get started again here in January after the holidays. So, so look for some emails from me. Maybe that second or third week of January, we're going to release our uh, 2014 schedule. Um, in the meantime, you know, most of you have my email address if you got the invite to that. You know, let me know what you think. Uh, feel free to suggest topics that you'd like covered. Um, we definitely want to cover what you're interested in and what you want to learn more about. So don't hesitate to email me, email Jay, email Cody, or anyone that you may be in contact and say, hey, you know, could you cover this for a half hour? And we'll definitely do that. So Cody, we'll end it there. Uh, thanks again for taking a half hour out of your time to, uh, to share your uh, very deep knowledge of the software. Uh, even though you don't have a British accent, I think people did enjoy it for sure. <laughs> well, it's all because I didn't bring the British accent in that, that they were <laughs> able to enjoy. But I appreciate everybody showing up and uh, happy fundraising. Yeah, happy fundraising. And look for an email a little later from me. I'll send out Cody's slides and I'll send out a recording of this. So happy holidays. If we don't hear from you, have a great new year, and uh, we'll chat again in January. Bye now. Bye.